Hi there, and welcome to my talk, How to Deal with Toxic People, Lessons from the Trenches of Open Source Development, here at PyCon DE 2022. My name is Gina Heuske, but I'm also known as Fusel around the net. I'm a 39 years old software engineer, maker, hobby baker, 100% nerd. And uh, yeah, I've also happened to be a full-time open source maintainer on my project Octoprint, which is the snappy web interface for 3D printers written in Python. And uh, I've been doing open source now for most of my adult life and uh, over eight years straight now of those just on Octoprint full time um, and even almost a decade now uh, on, on Octoprint exclusively. And you can imagine that during this time I've seen a lot of upsides but also downsides of, uh, of um, doing open source work. And today I want to talk about one very significant one of these downsides. So uh, I want to show you today some of the most common bad behaviors that I've encountered and provide some coping strategies that have helped me to, to, yeah, to handle these uh, uh, behaviors. Uh, some to diffuse the situation, some for personal sanity. And in general, I just want to try to provide a toolbar for maintainers and some guidance for open source users on how to deal with these situations. So let's first talk about bad behaviors that I have seen. What common bad behaviors are there uh, for open source maintainers that they have to face? First of all, there's the big, big issue with entitlement from users. People think that you owe them and obviously only them something. Uh, that usually boils down to some kind of misunderstanding of the social contract of open source or a misunderstanding of the realities of open source, that open source projects are usually maintained by a small group or even just a solo maintainer and often usually a very, very underfunded maintainer to boot. And uh, I've brought some examples with me here today of uh, paraphrased, um, uh, of paraphrased uh, examples of, 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 uh, of, of this, uh, yeah, this, this entitlement in action, so to speak. Uh, why isn't this obscure feature implemented already that I need for my personal workflow? How rude of you to refuse of, to implement something that I want. Wow, this bug is still open. Get off your lazy hmm, and fix it already. And yeah, sometimes the nerve of people is just, yeah, just leaves you speechless. What else do we see? Well, there's also a ton of frustration that can fire back at maintainers. Uh, people who tell you that your work or your mistake just cost them so, so many hours of their life who are ungrateful because they just ran into some kind of bug or yeah, or just yeah, seem to be very frustrated about anything that they encountered right after an update. People who have run into an issue with a project or sometimes just something related to your project uh, who just now want to vent the frustration at this problem that they faced and you are the first obvious victim of choice here to vent at, so they do that. And these situations are especially tricky because sometimes there actually is a real issue at the bottom of all of this. Some bug that you actually did introduce in your latest release or something that you need to address in your documentation, for example. And um, obviously as a maintainer, you want to solve this issue, but also you really do not want this kind of communication, right? It's just a bit too aggressive. And speaking of aggressiveness, there is also outright attacks that you sometimes have to face as a maintainer. I do not want to repeat these things here, to be honest, but some, sometimes, yeah, stuff around this um, in, in, the, in this shape and form is something that you have to face uh, when you maintain software. Sometimes it's from people who just want to troll you. Sometimes it uh, manifests as the next step of entitlement or frustration. In any case, yeah, being at the receiving end of something like this is never fun and actually quite, quite exhausting. So, how to cope with stuff like this then? The most important part really here is first to disengage and cool down. Your natural first instinct might be to just jump right in and give them an earful in response to whatever they told you and whatever you feel would be uh, the, the best response here. Just, first of all, don't do anything. Uh, because if you jump right in and escalate the situation, it will only make you look bad. And 
trust me when I tell you that it will also really only feel good for a very short time. What instead uh, you should do is, first of all, let off the steam you just felt boil up in yourself offline. Uh, personally, I can really just recommend to get yourself a punching bag into your office. Uh, this over there is actually mine. And yes, this is a real picture from my office. Um, and I have owned that one now since January 2019 and it has done a tremendous job in keeping me sane, healthy and relaxed. Um, but uh, if that is not an option for you to add to your office, then maybe just do jumping jacks, run in place, take a brisk walk around the block, anything that can get your heart rate up really. So that is the important part, getting your heart rate up, really getting it pumping um, and uh, and, and, and burning some of this stress. If any of that is completely out of the question, I don't know, maybe you're injured and you just cannot do that, all of that right now, or just you, you cannot annoy people around, sitting around you or you're afraid of being looked at strange, at least count to 100 and then back down again. Whatever you do, do not immediately engage because the most important part here really is that your initial stress response cycle needs to run through. And once that has run through, then you can actually respond, but not before. Okay, stress response cycle. What is that? Um, your body is primed to respond to a perceived threat. We've all heard this thing with the saber-toothed tiger in the bushes and you having this fight or flight response. Um, uh, when you when you smell it or when you hear it and then immediately being primed to run or to fight it or something like this and this does not only apply to saber-toothed tigers in the bushes but this also happens the same mechanism really happens um, when you have to face any of those toxic behaviors because your brain will perceive them as a threat and your body will prime yourself to fight or flee just as if it had somehow sensed the presence of a saber-toothed tiger and this priming now needs to run its cycle because otherwise you get stuck. Why? So, how this works inside your body is your brain sends out this, 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 this chemistry stuff that tells your body to enter this fight or flight response. And then it checks whether you did anything to acknowledge the, the, the stressor. So, be it the saber-toothed tiger or the toxic behavior that you just witnessed. And if you didn't, then it decides, oh, well, maybe you didn't get the memo and increases the, the chemicals in your body. So your fight and flight response gets, yeah, gets, gets amped up even more. And now it checks again. And if you still haven't reacted, it continues. So you are in, in, in this kind of endless loop that keeps on going and going and going until you do anything that pretty much tells your brain, yeah, okay, I got the memo. I know there's something that is threatening us. Uh, and I look, I did something against that. I ran away or I punched a punching bag or I just did jumping jacks or ran in place or something like that. Once you actually do this, your brain will rea realize, okay, this person actually now acknowledged that there is a problem. Everything is fine again. We can carry on as usual and uh, reduce all this chemical cocktail in your bloodstream again. And that is what you want to achieve here. Um, completing this, this initial cycle allows you to get your head back into gear. And frankly, it's also something that is really good for anyone to know how to do, regardless of whether they are a maintainer or if they are just someone who regularly has to face other problematic situations in their life. Um, I don't know, complicated family members or just your average daily, daily uh, um, insanity out there. So, um, yeah, completing the cycle is important and you should really try to figure out what allows you to complete your stress response cycle as quickly as possible and be um, your usual calm and, uh, and, and calculating self again. So, once you have achieved this goal and are actually back on track and actually have your head back in gear and are in full control of your emotions again, what can you do to actually address these kind of behaviors? 
One of the things that you can do is remind the people uh, of the realities of, of, of what open source actually is. And the realities here are that open source doesn't give anyone the right to demand anything. Um, open source is based on collaboration and cooperation instead. And that also means that users need to do their part in solving issues or getting features implemented. They cannot just go and demand that someone else does all the legwork. They also have to do their own part. And obviously not everyone can code and that is totally fine because code is not the only thing that people can do to, con to, to contribute to a project and to move things forward here. Uh, you can just be part of the community, help others uh, that are facing issues with um, issue analysis or with advice, guide other people through problems, provide maintainers with everything they need to solve a problem, help out with documentation, help testing fixes. All of this is possible for everyone. You don't have to be a, a developer to do that. And all of this takes off the, the, the load and the responsibility of, or that, that, that every maintainer has to carry and leave some time to do other stuff like implementing features or fixes. Um, and obviously, if you give maintainers more time and room to breathe, the likelihood that they will um, actually get a chance to fix bugs that you are facing or um, implement features that you desire also increases especially if they notice you exist and uh, are trying your best to help the project and only need i don't know something like half a day's work in order to 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 be helped a lot uh, on your own as well what i really do not like to do here and what 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 i would also prefer if people stop doing uh, it is just slap slapping what who, whoever is in front of you there with a very passive aggressive patches welcome because first of all patches welcome just makes it sound like code is the only form of welcome contribution which as we just pointed out it certainly isn't there is a ton of other stuff that people can do in order to help a project move forward that doesn't even involve touching a single line of code line of code and so i would personally prefer if we as a community could stop avoid doing that um, with one exception though um, when someone comes on your issue tracker and goes on and on and on, like how they could implement or fix whatever there's something in hours or, or even minutes and be done with it in a segment, and why do you not do that? And this feature is so trivial, and why do you not do that right away? That is a point where I will actually say, hey, you know, um, this is open source. Why don't you do it and show me how it's done? Maybe I can learn something from you here. Um, usually, nothing happens then but um in any case i think in this case in this case in this particular case something like patches welcome is fair game but in any other case just don't okay if this didn't work what 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 else can you do you can remind people of boundaries um you can tell them that they just overstepped yours if they call you names or yeah Put, pull your competence in question or something like that. Um, many people actually don't seem to even notice that they overstep your boundaries, especially if they in this frustrated or blind uh, in, or blind entitlement mode. So um, it, I've, I've, I've had it happen a lot that after I communicate cl clearly that I understand you have a problem here and I really want to solve that, but this is not how we are going to talk to each other. That um, they took a step back, went, huh, realized how they had behaved and apologized. Um, it caught me by surprise as well. <laughs> I did not expect to get apologies out of that. I simply wanted to lay down boundaries, but it works surprisingly often. Um, and after that, a constructive exchange can happen again and usually also does happen, which is really, really nice. And obviously this does not work at all if you yourself are still in attack mode and in ooh, saber tooth tiger needs to be punched in the face mode. So see above again for first disengaging and, um, and calming down again and running your stress response cycle. 
if you cannot find the right words um, to make your point clear, refer people to something like Brad Cannon's really amazing post, The Social Contract of Open Source, which I've also linked to here and which I can only recommend to, to read. Uh, just even if you are currently not facing a problem or have to have to have to tell anyone else about how they just overstepped your boundaries because it drives really drives the point home of uh, of how to communicate with people and, and 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 where expectations might drift apart between maintainers and users yeah and if all of that doesn't work and the abuser still doesn't back down and still continues to attack you or vent at you or in general just yeah reduce the friendliness of the room they are engaging you right now there are always additional measures um, you can just refuse to work on whatever is upsetting them if it only affects them. So for example, they really want this specific feature to implement, be implemented and you just say, I'm not going to do that after how you treated me. Maybe someone else will. I will be happy, will be happy to merge anything that anyone else does. But after how you've just treated me, I certainly will not put any minute of work into that. But again, that is only fair game if it is something that only affects the person who mistreated you. If it is something that affects the whole community, I don't know, some kind of big bucket that you just introduced in the last release. Uh, yeah, no, that is really not fair to do. What else can you do? Well, you can point the abuser to the door. You hopefully have something like a COC in pl place and you can quote that and you can tell people how they repeatedly ignored it and repeatedly um, went against it. And then you can just tell them to please leave. Um, with the words like you are no longer welcome here or something like that. And if, if even that doesn't work and they still don't step down and, 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 and I mean, don't apologize, but in any case, don't, don't stop doing what they are doing, then the ban hammer is always the option. So forceful removal of the person from the channel in question or even the, all of the channels of your project. And uh, I have done this in the past when there really was no other option left, but it really should be considered the last resort. What I find very, very important to point out here is that um, you do not have to accept abuse. A lot of maintainers appear to think that they need to just, yeah, um, need to just take all of that. And I'm telling you, no, you do not. For, your pro for the sake of your project's community and a welcoming atmosphere in that. It's really, really better if you do not accept this kind of behavior. Uh, you will immediately create a better climate for everyone. And that also seems to attract more people who uh, will also defend said climate so it doesn't just fall down to you alone as the maintainer. Speaking about maintainer, all of all of what I, what I just told you is, is pretty maintainer focused, but uh, yeah, what can the community as a whole of a project or of a, of a whole ecosystem do to help deal with toxic people? What I hear a really, really uh, whole bunch of times uh, during my years or during my life really <laughs> as, an, as an open source maintainer is well, yeah, toxic people, this is just uh, like it is an open source. And as a maintainer, you're just expected to take this kind of abuse and live with that. And yeah, if, if, if you cannot toughen up to that, then you're just ma not made out to be a maintainer. Uh, no, no, I absolutely do not agree with that. You see, all of us, uh, as human beings, really, not necessarily as open source citizens or as users or whatever, but really just as human beings. We all know bad behavior when we see it and we can call out bad behavior when we see it. We can remind people of the code of conduct. We can remind people of unwelcome tone and attitude. We can flag and report bad behavior so that moderators and maintainers can take action um, on, on things they might not immediately have seen. And in general, we can just just yeah, as a community, step up for better treatment of each other. Uh, we do not have to leave all of this dealing with toxic behavior and toxic people 
to the maintainers alone. Uh, we, we really can uh, step in, we can speak up, we can, um, we can, as I said, we can remind people when they are behaving like that uh, and, and how they are crossing boundaries with that. What I find important here is that at all points we still take uh, the best uh, steps that we can take to not escalate the situation. So if we feel like we are going into full-on attack mode, uh, then again, we could we should just step back, calm down, run the stress response cycle before we respond again to something like that. But we certainly can speak up, download, report, and etc. So um, in any case, uh, always remember yourself, also when you are uh, talking to people like that, that there is a human on the other side. So whether you're talking to toxic uh, elements of your community or whether you're talking to a maintainer as a user or whether you as a maintainer are talking to a user, there is always a human on the other side. Even if you are frustrated right now, even if you are angry right now, if push comes to shove, get a punching bag, run in place or do jumping jacks, but do not respond to anything that angers you before you have run your stress response cycle. Responding in anger will always just escalate and make the situation worse. That was my talk. Thank you very much for your attention. You can uh, reach me on Twitter as at Fusel and I will also put the slides up on fusel.net slash slides slash pycon.de 2022.pdf. Uh, also, finally, a thank you to all these nice people on Unsplash that I have listed below there for the images that I was able to use for this talk here. And thank you, and I have you, uh, and I hope you have a pleasant day. Bye. Hi. <clears throat> Hi. There. Uh, can you hear us? I can hear you. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, if you can hear me, yeah. You can. Yes. <laughs> we have a bit of a delay here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you for your amazing presentation, for your amazing talk. Um, I think. Oh, I left the questions downstairs. Uh, one moment. <laughs> I see there are no questions online. Well, oh no, there are there <laughs> are a lot of questions online. It just took a minute. Okay, uh, first off, uh, Lisa asks, would you advise not to engage and answer at all if someone is thus rude online? I think this rude online. If if someone is really 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 rude, I think it is still important to point out that that they are being rude. So if push comes to shove, just immediately ban them if there really is i mean if, if someone is so rude like i don't know death threats or something like that yeah right that you don't feel that they are actually even remotely interested in civil discourse with you then i think it's fair game to either if it if, if, if something like this happens on a public pl platform like i don't know on github on discord or something that is something where i would actually report it to the platform itself if it escalates that much because then they will also re be removed from the whole platform instead of just your project but that is a case where i would say yeah ban them and do not largely engage them just basically go like yeah this is not how we talk here ban um but uh, yeah as i said banning should always be a last resort and simply not engaging them just like trying to ignore the problem it will not make the problem go away so there are some people out there who then will just go repeatedly message you on several channels i've had this happen where people where i was asleep when someone suddenly decided they had some beef with me and they messaged me on pretty much every platform and uh yeah it's important to put the foot down in such cases and uh, make them go away just ignoring won't solve the issue Thank you. Uh, what do you think of Patches' welcome for library? Library users are usually also developers. 
yeah, I always think that this is too passive aggressive because even as a library developer, uh, if or a library user rather, uh, even if I'm a developer myself, there are, might be reasons why I'm not able to contribute a patch right now, but this problem is still bothering me. This still doesn't allow me, of course, to vent my frustration at the maintainer in question and be nasty in any kind of way, but still patches welcome only me assumes like the only meaningful contribution that you can do here to, in order to get this fixed is code. And if for whatever reason you cannot do that right now, then well, tough luck, uh, your problem, not mine. And I think that is simply not the right message to send regardless of whether the person in front of me is actually capable of contributing code or not. For example, I myself, if I now face a problem with the library, Yes, I could fix it, probably, uh, given my capabilities, but I have my hands full already with Octoprint itself, so I usually also just have to report and hope that stuff gets fixed instead of actually fi actually fixing it myself. Great. Uh, what are differences in reaction against toxic behavior in companies uh, dealing with customers in comparison to open source? Yeah. So I used to be in a, in a I've, I've, been, I've been actually working full-time in Octoprint now for eight years, but before that I was a, um, a software consultant uh, in the industry. And uh, yeah, I remember that it was tougher there. Uh, also, of course, highly depends on the cult culture of the company. So if you are in a culture where you always have to agree with the customer, no matter how they treat you. That I, is something that I would consider a huge problem and is actually something where I would say this company is not a place for me. Um, but yeah, this is, I guess, something that you should also talk and discuss with your uh, line manager and try to figure out solutions for that. Because in my humble opinion, also, if you're employed by a company, you should not have to be treated like that. Uh, and uh, lay down, be, be allowed to lay down some boundaries, or maybe even the company could lay down some boundaries if a client is that toxic in behavior. Just not not necessarily throw them out, but just uh, yeah, silence them for a couple of days or something like that until they had a ch chance to cool down. Apart from only dealing with toxicity, how can one help and support toxic people to get less toxic? That's a good question. So. As I said, my approach so far has been, and, and, and a surprisingly successful approach has been to simply show them when they are being toxic and when they are misbehaving and when they are crossing boundaries that they often apparently aren't even aware that they are crossing them in the heat of the moment. I have honestly no idea on more long-term solutions or how to do that. I think that is something where the whole community also has to step in and just constantly and, and, and um, and uh, with 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 further uh, remind people that no we are not talking to each other like that no we are still not talking to each other like that if you want to go anywhere then please treat the person uh, across the screen as a human being that they are and not as your personal punching bag so that would be my approach but um i have absolutely no scientific uh, data or basis to say that this works but yeah it's the only idea i have right now uh, do you use the same techniques also in other circumstances? Oh, absolutely, yeah. So uh, after I went through a breakup, the punching bag was also in heavy uh, rotation. And uh, also sometimes when something like just completely sets, uh, upsets me or something, I, when I notice I'm entering this, this, this loop, this feedback loop, where I'm getting angry and angry at something that maybe isn't even that problematic or something or i get upset about something it doesn't have to be anger it can also be despair or something then uh, i try to uh, deploy the same techniques yeah go for a brisk walk go punch the punching bag uh, stuff like that that's do absolute wonders uh, do you feel there's a gender bias in these sort of aggressions I honestly don't know. I feel that like some people just treat everyone like crap, regardless of what they think they are. I also, <laughs> I face the funny situation that a lot of people who use Octoprint seem to think that I'm at least one man, if not maybe 12s or something. So they, they, I don't think that when they attack me, they necessarily do that because I'm a woman, but rather just because they have a problem. The problem needs to be fixed now and they suffer from uh, everyone is an NPC but me syndrome. So uh, yeah, they just want their issue solved now, no matter what. So, yeah. All right. Um, I think we can close with uh, Nick uh, asking, not really a question, but thank you for Octoprint. It's amazing. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. <laughs>